The Lift & Co. Cannabis Expo returns to the Metro Toronto Convention Center November 18th to the 21st. Discover and learn about all things cannabis. Get your tickets at liftexpo.ca. Must be 19 plus to enter and attend. People are going to be taking hemp supplements, hemp juice, real understanding that it's so much more than just CBD in that plant. There's over 500 plant constituents. We get caught up in the pharmaceutical models like one thing, one magic pill, one drug, one thing. We screwed up aspirin getting it from white willow bark. It's so much more than CBD, folks. That's why you juice the plant. That's why you eat the plant. If you want to get healthy, eat it. If you want to get high, find the high THC and eat it. Welcome to the Miracle Plant Podcast, the show that inspires, promotes, and gives you a daily dose of inspiration from the people who have used cannabis to change their lives in extraordinary ways. Here's your host, Justin Benton. Welcome back to the Miracle Plant Podcast, where we talk about this miracle plant with so many names and how it helps people in so many extraordinary ways. Today, we're going to talk about juicing the miracle hemp plant and we have our producer and co-host dan the man is on with us along with my mom is back as well janet benton gaylord and we're going to talk about juicing she's a uh, master herbalist and has been juicing for decades and can get into the more of the science uh, of juicing and whole plant based medicine and holistic healing as well as we're going to talk about this confusion about hemp and cannabis and cbda and cbd and all of these letters so i hope you got your alphabet soup ready and we're going to try and make it as simple as we can and give you some research for those that like that deep dive uh, information as well and we're going to talk about that so to kick things off just real basically when we were looking for a miracle to heal our son from a severe regressive diagnosis of autism when he was three years old, he lost his language. He lost his ability to communicate. He went into a war, into a, his own world, and he wasn't uh, able to really be a part of ours. And so in the process of figuring out how we could clean his body up and get his body to be able to detoxify all the heavy metals and the pesticides that he was ringing off the charts in like the 99 percentiles in his brain and body, his, his body was attacking itself with inflammation and that was what really was hurting um, him. We flew my mom out from Nebraska, and the first thing we really started to attack, because when we left it up to the people who were trying to help us when we originally got our diagnosis, they were telling us, we were asking them about, what about diet? We read here that getting rid of dairy and gluten might help. And they were like, no, don't worry about that. We just need to focus on therapy right now, AB therapy and these kinds of things. And don't worry about those other kinds of things. And so that went against my intuition. And after a couple of weeks, we got rid of them and flew in a real expert. And to talk a little bit about that, my mom is here, Janet, and she can talk about what does it mean to clean up your diet? What does that do for your body? And uh, we were using juicing again as the main instrument to help get his digestion, his immune system, his gut biome healthy. So he could start to detoxify all of these heavy metals and pesticides that were collected in his brain when he was around the age of two and a half. So, Janet, the stage is yours. Thank you. And you're right. So autism is a very complex issue, mainly neurological. But all uh, diseases or illnesses that we have start with digestion. It's the first system that goes. And so when you're dealing with any kind of complex illness, you need to start, or condition, you need to start with making food that's bioavailable and easily digested because it usually with an illness, you're unable to break foods down to the very, very lowest levels of fatty acids, carbs, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. And so with juicing, you actually do that by removing the fiber while you're juicing. You now have a basically pre-digested uh, food that your body can easily uh, assimilate without any extra effort or without the use of extra enzymes. And it's important, by the way, that we protect our enzymes because they are there for healing. 
and most of us eat diets that aren't ideal and so we spend all of our enzymes on breaking down foods and that does not leave many left for healing and then the juicing also then allows the body to naturally cleanse on its own and that's very important i always tell people if you're really healthy then go ahead and eat whatever you want but when you have an issue with your health then you start with changing diet and when you have a severe issue one of my first recommendations is to start juicing by the way my real first one is to eat organic um, because every time you're eating something that isn't organic, you're adding Roundup, which is a neurotoxin and a carcinogen. And you're also adding GMOs, which actually affect our digestion. And turn off leptin, which tells our body when we're full. And so that's how we have the world of big gulps and very large portions. So again, too, any kind of illness, and it also works very well with, with autism. I first used a lot of it. My husband had cancer. Give it three months to live. And actually, we used I used diet. I didn't have CBDA then. I used diet and juicing and prebiotics or whatever, and he actually lived another 23 years. So I've worked a lot in this area very successfully and going organic and then having adding in juicing are the very basic properties that I always begin with. And so another important thing in America right now, somehow there's this craze about smoothies and smoothies are different from juicing. Uh, smoothies use have a blender or a Vitamix or whatever, and you put in, from what I can tell, talking to people, pretty much everything that they have in the house. And so they put in fruits and vegetables and they put in really expensive supplements and their chia seeds and hemp seeds and their ashwagandha and all those things. And again, once you put all those different types of foods together, your body, again, cannot break them down. It's just too many things. And so our bodies do well if you have fruit alone or juicing alone. And if you have proteins with vegetables and, and fresh greens or carbs with vegetables and fresh greens. But anytime you combine fruit with anything or your carbs and proteins together, you make it too difficult for your body to digest efficiently. And so again, that leads us back to the most efficient thing is the juicing also concentrates the nutrition. So you could eat a lot of apples and bananas and things, but you'd have to eat a lot to really get the benefit. And again, they have the fiber in there that slows down the digestion. So actually juicing is very important. And then the other benefit of juicing is you can combine vegetables and fruits together for juicing because once the fiber again is out, then the, it is uh, pre-digested and your body can utilize it very easily. So that's one of the, ba those are the basic reasons that you use juicing. And again, too, anytime your body's facing a health crisis, the last thing it needs is hard to digest foods. And, and so I also, by the way, recommend a vegan organic diet when you're facing a severe health crisis. And that includes many serious neurological conditions as well as some more run-of-the-mill conditions. So that's my brief recap of the importance of juicing. There you have it. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I, I know, Dan, you had some questions and things like that. Did you have any immediate questions now or should we plow on? No, I was going to ask you. I guess I'm going to really show my ignorance here, but I know how to take... You, if I had an orange and I squeezed it, I guess that's juicing. If I had a grapefruit and I squeezed it, that's juicing. I get that. But if I had a piece of celery, I don't really know how to juice a piece of celery. And I know it sounds <laughs> stupid for people that do juicing, but for us non-juicers, <laughs> us virgin juicers, that is confusing to me. So is there a piece of equipment that I need to purchase or how does it work? Well, one thing, by the way, is even if you're hand squeezing your juice and your grapefruits or whatever, those kind of citrus fruits, you're all, you will notice pulp. Like my grandkids are very sensitive to pulp. They don't like pulp. So again, too, you're not getting a true juice. The pulp still contains some fiber. And so the types of foods you're talking about, the different types of things to juice, do require different juicers. And so I will go ahead and just cover the three major juicers that I'm aware of. So citrus fruits, they do make hand juicers for that. They do a pretty good job. The real simple ones that have kind of a pattern on the top and you just literally hand squeeze. They also make an electric version of that, which, which looks the same, but runs by a motor. And so if you're uh, juicing a lot of citrus, then I would recommend even getting the electric ones. And then the citrus juices are, are very important. Lemon juice and citrus juice are very good additions um, to a diet when you're trying to be healthy. And so they have to be juiced separately. I've not come across a juicer that I can just toss an orange in. And so usually citrus juicing is done separately from other juicing. There is, Justin had mentioned the omegas earlier, 
the mango juicers are different than a real common juicer people get. And they have a long stem and then a horizontal portion. And within that horizontal proportion is a screw that literally does a much, much better job, especially with greens and with hemp. And so the mega juicers are the ideal juicer uh, to use with hemp because they really grind slowly and actually can get the juice or the actual extract out of the hemp. And also things like kale and any kind of deep, dark green is very good for you. And so that's the reason you'd use the omega juicers. Their downside is they are much slower because you literally have to pre-cut like your apples and different and your carrots and your celeries and put them in there and it comes out pretty slowly, but it does a much more thorough job. And so that again, too, to keep in mind, so the screw type juicer or the omega type juicer are what you need if you're using a hemp or any, actually any kind of greens. The most common type of juicer, one brand I've usually worked with is Breville. And they're the ones that have a big, loud, large mouth at the top. You can literally drop in a whole apple. You can drop in a bunch of carrots. You can drop in celery and cucumbers and pretty much any vegetable or fruit that you have, except bananas. They don't juice very well because they don't have much juice. So the Breville's more common and easier. And so it's a much easier cleanup and much easier to use. But if you really want to get benefit from greens, including hemp and the darker greens that are very uh, important for health, the omega or screw type uh, of juicer is very important. And the reason you can't like squeeze juice out of the celery, it just has more fiber and it's more embedded in it. Same with carrots and beets and all those different things. And the orange is unique being able to have the juice that's so accessible. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have any kind of a juicer, even juicing just on any kind of a hand juicer with your citrus fruits is fine. It's better to get some juice than except the perfection of one of the large juicers. Does that make sense? Yeah, much better. I assume that there was equipment that we needed to purchase. And you know what? Maybe after the show, I'll get the links to those equipment and we can put them in the show notes. So if anybody wants to to purchase one or, or look at them, we'll, they can just click the links in the show notes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to have a link to the exact Omega juicer that we use. So everybody can grab the exact same one. And it's the masticating of the plant that allows to grab every last, you know, morsel, that morsel of the nutrients of the plant in there that gets every little piece of CBDA or every little piece of all that good celery juice. And uh, that's really what that screw is doing, if you will, on the Omega. So we'll certainly have some notes and some links in the show notes so people can click and get on the exact right one. And they can always send us uh, an email or hit us up at themiracleplant.org. It's www.themiracleplant.org. And we'd love to answer any questions. And in fact, if you wanted to speak with Janet, you could go to 101cbd.org and click on free consultation. And you can set up a Zoom or a phone call with her to go deeper down the rabbit hole of juicing or just health consultation in general, or learn more about our story, learn more about the whole plant of cannabis slash hemp and the property. So on that note, I know that I wanted to um, discuss a little bit more about what the whole CBDA versus CBD the whole plant, the raw plant versus the heated plant or the decarboxylated plant or the denatured plant. And so here's how the story goes. And I think I've told this story before, but essentially uh, it comes down to how, let's just say Americans or American culture understands cannabis and understands for the word we use in this country since 1937, marijuana with an H, is that we think of that for cannabis, in order to get anything out of it, you need to put fire to it, which is true. If you're looking for psychoactive, psychotropic effects, then yes, you need to put fire to convert the THCA, the acid, that's the A, into another chemical. It literally drops an alcohol group and it turns into THC delta-9. And that is a psychoactive component of the plant, which most people associate with cannabis, especially in our country. 
for dozens of years. And that's basically the, the model that we've had in our head. So then this research comes out in the 1970s about epilepsy and seizures by Dr. Raphael Meshulam. And so there was like, he thought it was going to be a revolution. Nothing happened. It was buried. And they came out in 2019 to Pasadena, uh, California to tell the world and basically admonish the healthcare and the medical system for not getting with the program 40 years later. But so anyway, so then people were looking at eventually trying to use CBD for children's epilepsy. And we obviously with Charlotte Figi and her family and all the amazing work they've done. That's when CBD really saw the dawn of light in our country. And again, we were using an old model to make CBD oil. And when I was looking for a, a solution for my son, I tried the same old model, which was the old model is you take this beautiful plant and you run it through fire and you run it through ovens and you run it through hot presses and you run it through things to, to turn this beautiful plant into something other than what it was. Now, that makes a lot of sense if you're looking for THC Delta 9. If you are looking for those psychoactive properties, if you are looking for that, then that is what you need to do. But if you are looking to naturally supplement your endocannabinoid system, then there is the, the best way on planet Earth for us to interact with a plant is to eat it. And that is what this plant was meant for, is for us to eat the plant, to eat the buds, to eat the flowers, to eat all of it. And the simplest way to do that, other than just eating it, which you certainly can, is to juice it. And so that's why when you juice the plant, you literally take the omega juicer, you take that screw that's grabbing all the every little ounce of nutrients from that hemp plant and putting it into a juice that you can consume. And that grabs all of the CBDA, which is the raw version of CBD. Nothing's being heated or turned grabs all of the different cannabinoids that are in there, grabs all of the flavonoids like canaflavin A, which was proven to be 30 times more effective than uh, pain and inflammation than aspirin. It grabs all of the terpenes, all the smells, the flavors, the essential oils, the therapeutic benefits, the delivery system of our cannabinoids into our brains and into our receptors, grabs all of the amino acids, it grabs all of the omega-3s and 6s, grabs all that chlorophyll, all those wonderful other 500 plant constituents, and it locks it exactly the way Mother Nature designed it for millions of years to come and into contact with our endocannabinoid system as we consume the plant. So that is what we do every day twice a day for our family and for our son. And that is the simplest way for anybody on planet Earth to have a great, healthy relationship with this plant, is to get some hemp seeds, and we can give them to you for free if you place an order with us at 101cbd.org. Just put in the notes, free hemp seeds, and magically they will appear in the mail. And then we can show you how to grow them in your backyard. We have some YouTube videos and some courses for that. And you go buy an Omega juicer. And lo and behold, your relationship with this plant will develop as you get to learn how to grow this plant. And you get to learn the benefits of juicing this plant by seeing it in your everyday life. That's why we're so nuts about CBDA and all the natural naturally occurring constituents, nutrients, parts of this wonderful miracle plant. And uh, that's why the, the title here, we're on Clubhouse recording live for the Miracle Plant podcast. The title on Clubhouse is fun. It says, don't take CBD. It's like just grabbing your attention. And what we're saying there is consume the whole plant. And, the, and this miracle plant that's been around for millions of years made CBDA for a reason. And if you're looking to get healthy, we say eat it. If you're looking to get high, then go find some THCA plant and heat it. So that's my two cents on that. I hope that was that was a good uh, take on our CBD. Any questions or anything you want to add, Janitor Dan? And Amos, I see you down there in the audience, brother. I would love to have you up here. I know you're busy doing stuff, but Amos owns hemp juicing stores in uh, Texas. And so I hope he can join us on stage to to add his his wonderful two cents. He's been on the podcast before and wouldn't you? There he is. So Amos, welcome to the Miracle Plant Podcast, brother. Great to be back on the show in this live format. 
I'm, it's pretty amazing that you text me to join me in or to to join this because I was actually typing up like a little ebook on uh, cannabis juice right now. So it's like helpful to to hear you guys. That's why I was just listening for a bit. But yeah, big fan of raw cannabinoids. Justin is. I'm a big fan of just alternate uses of cannabis in general, aside from just traditional CBD and THC products. But particularly on the health side, a lot of people are just not aware of raw cannabinoids. They don't know the differences. They don't know the benefits. And a lot of times when I talk to people about cannabis juice here in Texas, I, I get one or one or two responses usually. It's either asking about what type of tincture or CBD I'm putting in there. And I'm like, no, it's not. You got to understand it's not like an infusion. We're actually juicing the leaf of the plant. Or they'll ask, why would I want to do that? They just don't understand. So it's important to educate and keep pushing the message. I've been able to do some experimentation here in Texas. And now it's like, all right, how do we really get this out to the people? And for me, the approach is opening up hemp juice bars. And so that's the journey I'm on right now. That's awesome. I'm super happy to have you back. How has, uh, how have the customers, what's been their feedback with the hemp juice that you've sold? And, and I know you do juicing other great fruits and vegetables as well. But specifically, what kind of feedback have you gotten from customers who tried your hemp juice? Yeah, so last year we did some R&D with recipes and, you know, getting our customers to try it. I'll say the feedback is great as far as like how they feel in the taste. But I'll say that they we haven't been offering it long enough for people to have any like great testimonial stories of what it's done for their health. They're drinking a one or two or three bottles of, of juice like sure you're gonna feel good the couple hours after but to really get like the full effect you gotta take it daily like anything else it's a lifestyle it's not just a miracle that you drink it once and you're fixed and that's with all you know plants so i'll say that the feedback overall is just that they love the tastes and we do blends for the most part we do offer like shots uh, and right now we're in a transition period, so we don't have our storefront is not open. We're by order only right now. We have a commissary kitchen, and we're working on getting the first store open, working with the juice bar consultant to, to really do it. But really what I was focusing on last year was formulating recipes that are palatable and also get a good dose of, of cannabinoids through the leaves for the most part of the hemp plant because for a long time, like Justin, for a long time, I've wanted to do raw cannabis juice, but I couldn't because of the laws. And last year they passed House Bill 1325 here in Texas, which cult or, uh, legalized cultivation of hemp here. So I was able to get my hands on some fresh leaf. And that's been the biggest impediment to like having uh, the raw hemp juice consistently is the supply chain of, of leaves specifically for juicing. but. There's a guy, I don't know if you guys have come across him yet, but his name is David Hildreth, and his company is Farms, and he has been, for the past three or four years, his company has been cultivating a hemp baby greens specifically for food, so for chefs, for salads, for juice bars like myself, and they're actually opening a grow facility in Austin, and so that'll help bridge the supply chain and give us a consistent supply of hemp leaves because the leaves we were sourcing were, were fan leaves and water leaves off of uh, like CBD variety plants and so once those farms harvest there's no more leaf so for a while we didn't have any leaf but definitely should get David on here he's got a wealth of knowledge and he's been working closely with the FDA to get hemp baby greens federally approved so the FDA has approved them as a food but now he's working on getting them get the grass certification generally recognized as safe currently to my knowledge there's only three cannabis products that have the grass a certification and it's hemp protein hemp seed and hemp seed oil so uh, once he finishes this these trials he's doing with the FDA hemp baby greens will also be added to that list which is a major thing because right now up until he got them just federally approved in general even the baby green, like a two-week-old like seedling, was considered like a CBD product if it was hemp or if it was marijuana. It's, it's regulated as like a marijuana THC product. So he got them to recognize that 
in that first stage, that seedling stage, these can be used as foods and they should be regulated as foods, not as a CBD or THC product. But yeah, went off on a little rant there. We'll have more, we'll have a lot more feedback from our customers once we open up later this year in uh, San Antonio. I Just so really quick background, I started this juice company just out of just pure passion with $29 from my parents' kitchen about six years ago. I've been saying this is our, our first store s- six years in the making, and I'm excited that it's going to be a full-on hemp juice bar. So hopefully we can have you all out once we get the, the doors open. Heck yeah, brother. I can't wait. And I can't wait to help you unfold it into a, a franchise all over the country. I got a, a great guy, Don Shin, who helps take franchises from a couple stores to 50 or 100. So whenever you're ready, I would love to see those those juice bars all over the country, all over the world, darn it. Yes, uh, that's the plan. Yeah, so I, I think it's great. And I know you're an expert on juicing. Do you Did you have more to add about Omega Juicers or maybe the what you've learned about juicing and the best ways to do it? For sure, yeah. I think Janet, she covered it very well. The only thing I would add is maybe a couple other models. She mentioned it's slow, and that is, that's the biggest drawback with the slow juicers. Obviously, it's slower, but you get a higher yield and you get a higher quality juice. But for some people that are on the go, it may be useful to have a centrifugal juicer, which is the one that spins very quickly. They're quicker, not just because the disc spins quickly, but because they have a larger chute. You don't have to chop the produce so small, which a lot of the a lot of the process gets slowed down with the slow juicers because the shoots are smaller. I mean, they do that because you can't feed it too quickly because it's uh, a slow juicer. But that's what takes up a lot of the time aside from the juicer juicing slowly is the prep time. So depending on people's lifestyle, centrifugal juicer may be more beneficial if they only have 10 or 15 minutes in the morning before they go to work they can pretty quickly make a juice versus maybe the average might be 20 or 30 minutes for a slow juicer for a single serving, depending on how much and what ingredients. Then the only other thing I would add is a cold press. Cold press juicers typically are not for personal use, although there are some like countertop models. They're getting more affordable because they're usually, uh, I think the Norwalk juicers are most popular for like personal and it's probably around $3,000 or so, three to 5,000 depending on the model. But the the cold press juicers basically pulverizes the produce into like a pulp and then uses a hydraulic press to squeeze all of the juices out or yeah, juice out of the cells of whatever it is we're juicing. In this case, leafy green material like the cannabis leaf. And that just helps preserve as much of those nutrients as possible. I don't know if you guys touched on that a lot of the quality gets degraded with a few different factors, one being heat, another being air and oxygen, and then also just time, right? Over time, it's just going to degrade because it's raw and unpasteurized. But if we can, the best juice bars in the world have their kitchens fitted with Good Nature is probably the premier brand for cold press juicers, and then their entire kitchen is like a cold environment it's basically like a refrigerator the whole kitchen is refrigerated that way the even the equipment is cold that way they can keep it as cold as possible to preserve as much as those enzymes and nutrients so a cold press juice is a little more high level for people that are very serious about getting a high quality juice or it's they're trying to heal from a chronic illness like cancer or autoimmune diseases that's the highest quality juice i have experience using some commercial versions and uh, yeah so probably that's about the only other thing i would add to that is just a little education on the cold press side love it brother love it and that's obviously when we're making our oils and things like that our, we have similar machines and processes with the cold pressing and and all of that to get all of it out of it so i am so excited you showed up man and i'm, I'm glad that it all worked out and of course the universe would align that you were working on a juicing cannabis ebook when I pinged you just happenstance as we're going live on Clubhouse on the Miracle Plant Podcast talking about hemp juicing. So there you have it, universe. We're yep. aligned. We're always aligning, bro. That's awesome. It was great seeing you out there at uh, NOCO, and I look forward to catching up with you real soon. And if there's anything I can do to help you with opening up stores, 
and whatnot, you know where to find me, brother. So thanks for swinging by. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, bro, and I'll definitely reach out. I'm going to go to the audience and just listen in. Love it, brother. Thanks again. So, Dan, Janet, any other questions or any other thoughts based on uh, that conversation there from from Amos? I wanted to thank him, too, because I hadn't added in the cold press because, again, two of their large commercial things that I've never been able to afford. But, no, that's excellent to know more information. And at some point, I wanted to always do my quick summary on why it's better to have cold press versus more heated or whatever type versions of uh, hemp plant extract or CBDA. But do you have a question, Dan? Why don't you go ahead? No, I was just going to let the audience know that we'll put Amos's link to Amos's uh, business in our show notes also. So if you wanted to buy even before his juice bar opens, he's selling some of this online. So if you wanted to, to check it out, we'll have those links in the show notes also. That's wonderful. I just wanted to make a real quick note that one reason that we wanted to keep the CBDA, a very basic reason, is we all, or hopefully most of us know about the endocannabinoid system or the system of receptors in our body for cannabinoids. And also that hemp and marijuana or the cannabis plant is the only plant on earth that our body has receptors just for, which makes it just far more powerful than any herb or herbal combination that exists out there. And also when you, so when you have CBDA, it goes beyond the endocannabinoids system. THC tends to go more toward CB1 receptors and CBD goes more for CB2 receptors. And the CBDA is incredibly unique that it can go to every receptor in our body and actually uh, balances or has homeostasis for every system in our body, including our immune system, our endocrine system, and balances things like blood pressure and blood sugars. So it's, as Dr. Mishulam, uh, one of my gods in the field, said it's 10 to 100 up to 1,000 times more powerful the CBDA is than CBD or THC. And so anytime you're work, looking for health solutions, and especially for complex or life-threatening health solutions, you always need to go to the best and the top. And so the CBDA um, is what you're having there. And then just quickly, too, it's also a very strong anti-inflammatory because it literally balances the inflammation levels in the body. And the same with antioxidants, incredibly strong antioxidant actually balances the antioxidant levels in the body. And then it also, the very unique quality, it's able to uh, repair nerves that have been damaged. It's able to protect nerves from being damaged like an MS and other ongoing diseases like that. And the most amazing thing, it can regenerate nerves. And again, that's what we, I see every day. We started with seeing it with autism and Alzheimer's and ADHD and now widely through our neuropathies. And I just had a new category last week with a lady very successfully treating myasthenia gravis, which is a very complex neurological disease. And one reason we call it the miracle plant, because every day we see literally just miracles, people with conditions that no one has any hope. They've been taking a lot of medications, or maybe there's surgeries involved, but there's not any solution, and they tend to keep degenerating. And so again, too, the importance of CBDA, or the raw whole plant, uh, really can't be emphasized enough. And juicing in the home is the best way for you to get it at home. And then if you want it even more highly concentrated, that's when you'd switch to our sublingual products that go under your tongue and right into the bloodstream. So again, too, juicing is incredibly important for hemp usage, especially for health conditions. Absolutely. And I know there's a day coming soon, and I know it's already happened in some places, but they're going to sell hemp and hemp flowers and hemp leaves and the plant right there at the farmer's market. And someday it might even be at Whole Foods, and I can already see it at the Whole Foods juice bar. And so you're just hearing it here first. Our vision is clear that within the next three, five years, there's going to be, people are gonna be taking hemp supplements, hemp juice, real understanding that it's so much more than just CBD in that plant. There's over 500 plant constituents. We get caught up in the pharmaceutical models like one thing, one magic pill, one drug, one thing. We screwed up aspirin, get it from white willow bark. It's so much more than CBD, folks. That's why you juice the plant. That's why you eat the plant. If you want to get healthy, eat it. If you want to get high, find the high THC and eat it. This is the sound cannabis companies hear when they try to place an ad on Facebook, Twitter, or Google. The tech overlords' arbitrary discrimination against our industry is unfair. But until they change their restraint of trade policies, we need an alternative way to share our message with our customers. 
Cannabis podcasts are one of the last advertising platforms not controlled by tech monopolies. And for as low as $9.99 a week, cannabis companies have the freedom to play their uncensored commercials to customers around the world. Don't let tech bosses dictate how you run your business. Go to podconnects.com. That's podconnects.com. And for just $9.99 per week, you can go from this to this. I saw we have some more people that want to come up on stage. Jennifer, do you have a question? Actually, I have a couple questions, but also, um, Justin, I had spoken to you. I don't remember what day it was, and I had received the Chill X, and I wanted to say thank you first and foremost. Thank you for getting those out, for your team getting those out. I only tried it for the first time last night, so I'll give you my feedback after a couple nights. I've tried it because I did a full dropper instead of a half like it says. Oops, still good. I don't think it was a bad thing that I did a full dropper, hopefully. But my questions are... I was going on your website and I looked at the strength potency and I'm, I'm confused again because my brain is, works a little different than someone else's. Can you explain that to me? I'm trying to figure out if the travel size, it says 265 milligrams. Does that mean that's what's in a 10 milligram dropper? So that's what's in the whole bottle. So those are just oh. travel size starters. If you do like half of a dropper, it's around 10 milligrams or a full dropper is 20 milligrams. And are, are you using the product for sleep? Yeah, I did that quiz. Yeah. And then when yeah. I had spoken to you on the DMs and everything, you're like, yeah, that's probably a good product for you to start out with yep. to see if you like it. I was like, cool. I just want to make sure, number one, I'm utilizing it the best I'm supposed to be doing because yep. you want to make sure. Okay, so it's only 10. I was like, okay, because I didn't understand the potency strength. That kind of confused me yep. when I was on your site looking. I'm like, whoa, that's some... I didn't know that was the full bottle. I thought that was the mm -hmm. strength of what you're taking as a dose. And I'm like, wow, that seems like a lot half of a dropper because sometimes half of a dropper will do the trick and sometimes you need more sleep is a tricky one it can take a couple nights of taking it and then if that doesn't work holding it under your tongue for five minutes about five minutes before or about half an hour before bed then try taking it during the day as well because it builds up in your system cbd lasts about eight to ten hours in your blood so <laughs> some people are like why would i be taking it during the day if i'm going to be using it for night again cbd is helping all regulate all systems and if you're a healthy, happy person with, you know, less anxiety and your neurotransmitters are firing at the correct pace, like a thermostat on a 72 degree setting, then that's what helps you sleep at night is when your body's just at ease and you can fall asleep gracefully. So some people, a lot of people will just take it at night and it'll work for them. Usually the first couple of nights they'll notice it. And then when they wake up the next morning, it's, you got to be kidding me. I haven't slept till the sun came up and I literally <laughs> cannot remember. So I hope, look forward to hearing that story from you. Yeah, I look forward to sharing all that. And like I, I had spoken with you because I do work in the social media marketing field. So I have big plans on creating all the beautiful things and tagging you. So I do have a couple more questions if that's okay. The, um, Fire other away. The other, you mentioned the uh, leaving it in your mouth for five to seven minutes. Can you explain to me where this n magical number came from? I'm just curious because I like to know all the things. Up, that would, up. So the magic number came from, so there's some research on the best way to absorb it in a CBD into your body. And the best way to do it besides um, a suppository, which is 99%, which people aren't really interested in unless they have cancer. So under your tongue, there's different research that shows how long it takes to absorb under your tongue. And in general, a minimum was four minutes. And so just by keeping track of, we worked in the beginning with health questionnaires of everybody using our product. And as we started out with, like many companies still do, saying like 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, and then swallow. And then as we increased to three to five minutes, we noticed our people having much quicker responses and deeper responses. And then when we went to the five to seven, just to make sure that it was in there long enough, then we saw even better improvements. So that's where that came from. And then also basically how osmosis works. So putting it under your tongue, it goes through that membrane at the bottom of, under your tongue through osmosis. And if you've ever done those science experiments, a lot of fresh water, it's not a quick process. They don't run over there. And so actually the longer you leave it, the more of it can go through that membrane into your sublingual gland. And from there, there's a good blood supply going through that takes it into your body and within 20 to 40 minutes it's at the receptors and starting to work you can start to feel effects depending upon what you're taking it for and so that's basically where that came from uh one hint i always give people and we actually have a card that now is being sent out with our regular orders that just explains some of this information 
But to help it under your tongue longer without a problem, it helps to put your tongue on the roof of your mouth and then slide it back into that indentation that's back there. And then you don't have your tongue down in the CBD under your tongue and you get less saliva, it's less awkward and you're not actually tasting it the whole time. And so by the time you actually do swallow, it's somewhat diluted and also most of the CBD has gone through. And so a lot of people do five to seven minutes. I have a lot of people with serious conditions that actually leave it 10 or 15. Um, sometimes I leave it till it's gone, which is about 20 minutes. So that's why you want to get the maximum benefit from it. Anything you swallow quickly or like pills or gummies, it goes through your digestion of your stomach and your liver, and you end up with about 10%, all the studies show. And so if you took 20 milligrams, you'd get two. And again, too, that's why uh, it's important to keep it under your tongue for that amount of time. Oh my gosh, Janet, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, I set my timer when I did it last night. I'm like, ooh, this is a long seven minutes. <laughs> so yeah, like, I will pull, oh I, I usually play on my phone or sometimes I say I'm meditating, but usually I'm just playing on my phone. And in the beginning, especially with younger children or whatever, we do have the parents set a timer and start out like a minute and move it up to the five minutes. And then one last assistance for sleep. Since it does take about 20 to 40 minutes to start working, I recommend about an hour before bed. And different people have different metabolisms, so some can do like a half an hour. And then sleep is a very complex process for our body. You have to not be full of anxiety or like too many quick thoughts about going over the day or tomorrow. It also helps to be pain-free, uh, to have low inflammation levels. So like Justin said, your body has to be balanced. So sleep is actually a very good indicator of how healthy you are. Because if you're able to go to sleep and sleep regularly, it means many, most of the things in your body are working pretty well. And then CBD has that whole homeostasis effect too that does help get things balanced so you can sleep. And so if you just take it at night and it's not working quickly, uh, stop and think about what else is going on. So if you have daily pain or daily anxiety, that's when you'd switch to also be taking the CBDA in the morning. And then some people with more serious conditions would take it the three times a day since it lasts about the six to eight hours. So a lot of people start first thing in the morning, midday, and then the hour before bed. There's another issue that comes up with sleep is a lot of people wake up around two, three in the morning. It's just called early morning awakening, which is a funny term. But it can be from uh, depression, but also can be just from body issues. It's when our livers are working at their most, their highest level. And so sometimes people have to take a little bit more at that time. And then usually over time, again, that need goes away. And so everybody's very different with sleep. So right, if you're finding out it's not, you're not going to sleep right away at night, just with that dose before night, uh, look at what else is going on in your life and, and add in like at least a morning dose to help get your body uh, balanced quicker. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. I'm like literally taking notes. And Justin, so you know that when I do plan on broadcasting to the world and everything, I'm making sure that for every night that I take it, I take detailed notes. So like last night, I took a full drop and I did sleep through the night and didn't wake up once. Um, that, that that happens irregularly. So it was nice to see that the first night that did happen. And then my last question, hopefully it's like a quick one. So sorry, I see Tammy's up here. I heard before that Amos was talking about smoothies and um, juices and everything. And I was like in and out because I was making a smoothie at that time and my blender's quite loud. So I, I missed a couple of things. But are you able to put, Justin or Janet, are you able to put your oils in a smoothie? Would I have been able to add this to my smoothie this morning? Or is that not a good idea because of what you were talking about, Janet, with keeping it in your mouth for a long period of time? I will answer that because if you heard the first part of the blog, I personally have a dislike of smoothies just because I well, we'll go over it briefly. Our fruits are pre-digested <clears throat> and juice is pre-digested. But if you put fruit with protein and carbs all in the same thing or all of your expensive supplements, it makes it very hard for your body to digest it. So you're losing most of it. And since all illness basically starts with digestion, your digestion's not working in the first place if you have any kind of major illness. When you are putting in the complex things you put in a smoothie, you're really losing a lot of the benefit. And it takes a lot of your enzymes to try to digest it. And so that's why you do juicing in the first place, because it has nothing left in there, but very pre-digested, juicing pre-digests it, and so your body can easily use it. And so that's where I would keep any kind of CBD or whatever be with juicing and not with smoothies. And I know I'm probably a heretic because everybody's so into smoothies right now, but really based on how we digest and what are, how our stomachs work with illness, I do not recommend them unless they are just fruit smoothies. And then later in the day, you could have a protein smoothie but they need to be separated so your body can use them, especially if you have any kind of illness or condition. 
Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, I actually do that. I try to keep, and if I do fruit, it's super, like super organic and like minimal amount of grams of it and everything like that. So thank you. And I do have a juicer. It's still sitting in its box. Nobody make fun of me. Thank you. One day I will open it. Maybe I'll open it like this week. Now, after what I'm hearing you say, Janet, and just give both a try and play around with it. So thank you guys for your time. And Justin, thank you for all the help the other day and getting these products out to me. And I look forward to taking them and uh, reporting back. And thanks, guys. I'm going to move myself back down to the audience. Have a good one. You too. Thanks for swinging by. Tammy, welcome to the Miracle Plant Podcast. How are you? How can we help? Hey, how you doing, Justin? Wonderful. Uh, good morning, Miss Janet and Dan. Yeah, so I, really, you answered a lot of because Jennifer had very similar questions. I was going to ask because I actually was going to take some of the blackberry cobbler that I got from you and I was going to put it in one of my, I have some fresh juiced lemonade and I was going to try it like that. But I'm just going to go ahead and do the under the tongue because I do believe that is the most powerful method. And I wasn't really sure it said the five to seven minutes. And I had never held anything under my tongue for that long, but I know it will essentially evaporate to some point. But yeah, that was one of my questions I had about the actual drops from your Chill X line. And my other question was, have you heard of anyone ever saying that any type of hemp products, as far as like a, a salve or ointment or a rub is concerned, any type of hemp pro products that may cause stiffness to the joints? Nope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it, it depends what's in there, right? Because look, at the end of the day, CBDA has been proven to be one of, if not the most powerful anti-inflammatory on planet Earth. So it, that, that's like saying drinking water makes you um, thirsty. It's likely that there's some other things that are in the product itself that are drying out. or And there's also a possibility that the way that the CBD was extracted, it could have been heated, denatured, isolated, alcohol extraction, shipped over from China, turned into some white fake sugar powder crap, and they call that hemp. So truly all CBD is not created equal. Some people out there think that's the case. It just isn't. But look, there's orange juice is orange and so is tang, but they ain't the same and our body does not know how to use them the same and they are not the same nutritionally. So my hunch is if someone was saying that they were taking a hemp product that was giving them stiffness, there's extenuating circumstances the product itself is not a true representation of the plant because it just it's been documented for 8000 years this plant in medical oriental journals that it's been helping our bodies recover from issues like that for millennia so the answer is not the short answer is no there's the long answer i'm pretty sure jana wants to say something too you know me so well i was just going to say the only thing that i can think of that would cause any joint to be stiff. For one thing, when you rub on any kind of topical, we call them or rub or whatever, they go into the tissue underneath, but they would not go deep into a bone. They don't go into the bloodstream. They stay in that local area. And it, the only time I've ever heard of stiffness is when there's THC in the product. And as anybody who knows who smoked marijuana, you get the classic dry mouth. I had a gentleman who took too much of the THC because a young bud tender didn't really explain it to him very well, but he literally, when he woke up, he had dry mouth, his joints were stiff, and even his eyes were dried out. And so the only time I ever come across stiff joints and anything is, is a THC, because it does have that ability to be dehydrating. But no, but again, too, there's just so many people who make different things. So someone could call something CBDA, or CBD is what they would call it, but it has all kinds of other products in it. It depends very much on what the carrier oils are and what other ingredients are in it. But no, I'm guessing they had a product that had a lot of THC in it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, um, actually, I had bought a product that was hemp derived, and it it made my wrist feel extremely stiff, and I was surprised because it was hemp. And I was wondering, was it the camphor? Because I know that camphor people do, you know, react differently to it. Yeah. I was just wondering. Was yeah, it the camphor can be involved. If you ever use camphor, no one, it's not very common anymore. I remember as a child, it was common. But anyway, 
the camphor we used to put on cold sores and it does dry them out. That's what its purpose is. So I would be, but it'd be unusual anyway for any kind of topical to make your wrist that stiff because one of the main reasons people use CBD is for pain and the main pain is arthritis related. And so it's very effective with pain. So I would not think it was a CBD. So it could be the camphor, it could be something else, it could be how it was produced. But no, yes, please try some of our topicals. They, I promise, will not do that. Okay, thank you. And I just have two more questions. As far as the drops are concerned, the tincture, it's okay to take this during the day. I heard you answer the young lady earlier, Jennifer, but it's okay for me to take this during the day in terms of not getting sleepy. <laughs> yeah, so the Chill X is the one that we were talking about. So the Chill X is our whole plant cold extracted CBDA oil that has a little organic passion flower extract in there. And so passion flower is like a chamomile flower, like a chamomile tea. So it's relaxing. So I take the Chillax. The number one reason people used to come was pain and inflammation. And recently it's been stress and anxiety. And so that's what Chillax is for. It's for stress and anxiety and deeper sleep at night. So you certainly can take it throughout the day if you're stressed or anxious. Again, so the whole plant, CBDA, it's going to help balance your body. So if you wake up in the morning and you take Chill X, your chances are because of that whole plant working for you, balancing your body out, it's actually going to give you energy. It's actually going to give you what you're missing. It's like that thermostat set at 72 degrees. And that's our body at homeostasis. Like when we were a seven-year-old and we get a scratch on our forearm and the next morning it's gone. So that's homeostasis. And so you wake up in the morning and you're feeling sluggish or what have you, or depressed or whatever. If you take some whole plant cannabis oil, the good stuff, it's going to help lift and lift up your body where it needs to be in your brain, get you to where you need to go. Now we do offer a product called Boost, which has a little bit of CBGA oil in it, which has been great for mental clarity, focus and energies with the feedback we get. And we also add a little organic American ginseng extract in there too. So some people will take the boost in the morning. They'll take the chill or the alleviate, which is for pain and inflammation in the afternoon, and then take the chill at night. And yes, you can combine them because it's really all the same product, just one herb difference. And there is a little bit of CBG in the boost, but it's again, CBG, CBD, they all last in your body for about eight hours. So if you're dealing with something chronic or you just want to be uh, proactive in keeping your health tip top, then the most people will take it two or three times a day. Great. Thank you so much. And this is just a general question. Have you drank any of the, it's called hemp 2.0s? Not heard of that one. What, what's a hemp 2.0? It's, it's Sounds just, like a good marketing. Yeah. What? It's a drink that's been out for a moment now and I love it. I love it. I, I've been buying it for probably about two years now, but I was wondering if you had heard about it, Justin, and how you felt about it. But yeah, it's a drink. You can find it in your local gas station, your Whole Foods, or anywhere. It comes in different uh, flavors, but I was just wondering because I love it, I, and I don't know if I just love it for the taste or is it really doing something. I would love. Well, it. I will. I would love yeah, to. I will go. Yeah. I will go check it out, definitely, and look at the ingredients and try it. But I'm glad that it's working for you. And if it's got some good hemp in there, then it can't be a bad thing. And I know we need to wrap up here. Dan has got to go. Uh, he's on. Uh, he's been helping us record on location. So I'm so happy that he was here. And Lee, if you have our super quick question, we can wrap it up. Uh, I can answer, take that question. And, and we will be here every Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific. But Lee, do you have a quick question for us before we go? I just have a quick thank you. This is Leah Patrick and Justin, I want to say thank you. And Janet, Dan, thank you so much for having this space. I want to thank you for the Blackberry tincture, first of all. And I wanted to let you know that the CBD tincture as well is helping. And great news on my son's scan. It is stable. So between the CBD, CBG, CBC, CBC, CBGA, CBN, and a little THC, the brain tumor is stable. And May is Brain Tumor Awareness Month. And thank you so much for having this space. I just appreciate you all.
Well, wow, 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 wow. That is such awesome, incredible, amazing news. And that is that is what this platform is all about. This plant helped our son, my mom's grandson, with his severe neurological brain ailment. And it was a wing and a prayer, literally. And when we had our prayers answered, it was our uh, moral obligation to pay it forward. And we set the platform up. And we set up Miracle Plant podcast to share the stories of how this plant can help heal our bodies, how this plant can help our bodies heal themselves. So I'm so happy and I'm so thankful that you got a chance to, (laughs) number one, that your son's feeling great and he's got a great prognosis and things are looking up and that's just unbelievable. That's the Miracle Plant and great organic CBD, CBG, all the cannabinoids, full spectrum. And I just want to say thank you and God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Be sure to come back again next Saturday or whenever you can. I'd love to hear more about how things are going. And, and that's really what helps keeps us charging on because there's, as in life and business and organizations, there's always um, obstacles and there's always ups and downs. and Really what keeps us going is that we know what we're making an impact in the world. So I really appreciate you coming on and sharing that. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a blessed day. Everybody, thanks for stopping by and thanks everyone for tuning in. And next week we'll be back here, same bat time, same bat channel on Clubhouse at 10 a.m. Pacific Saturday. So we'll be covering topics of this miracle plant and how it helps people in extraordinary ways and really understanding why it helps and how it helps and just hearing the stories of how this miracle plant has helped so many. So thank you everybody for coming in and tuning in. Please share, please review. When you share, these stories get out. When you review, it's easier for people to find these stories on your Apple podcast. So thank you everybody for coming by the Miracle Plant Podcast and happy healing. And as we always say on the count of three, unmute your mics because what we're doing here is our mission is very clear and simple. It is to heal the world. So on the count of three, we say heal the world. So if you're in the audience, you can join in as well. On the count of three, one, two, three, heal the world! All right, everybody, see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Miracle Plan Podcast.